Previously on Chronicles of a Realm, Treasures of the Main. While sailing for Limsa Laminsa, your ship is caught in a massive storm and at some point a giant sea serpent jumps over the ship. You also meet this mysterious Catwoman. When you arrive in Limsa, everyone remembers the storm but not the serpent. You meet Badron at the Drowning Wench and the Catwoman appears after some random air vibration. Badron sends you around the city-state to get acquainted and every time the air vibrates, it seems people are acting different and the Catwoman appears. You meet with Wawalago and Sisipu at the Fisherman's Guild and you're asked to escort Sisipu to a lighthouse prone to Sahagan attacks. And that's what you missed in Chronicles of a Realm, Treasures of the Main. And before we continue, allow me to make a quick correction. In part 1, I mentioned the pirate crews conspiring to assassinate the Admiral, and I accidentally said that the Admiral was Merlwib. This is, of course, incorrect. He's talking about Merlwib's predecessor. I forgot the air had vibrated and all that. This is important, so remember this. Now, where were we? Uh, yes. The road to Oshan's Torch is a dangerous one. Beasts lurking around every corner, ready to attack. But you've been a good adventurer and earned some gil through leave quests. You spend it all on new gear. You successfully protect Sisipu from the anglers springing forth from the bushes. And you arrive at the lighthouse. But something's wrong. No one's here. Usually, pullers would be nearby, but instead the whole area is silent. Sisipu enters the lighthouse to investigate further, but quickly returns. It's empty. Sisipu shudders, and like so many times before, the air vibrates sharply. You start looking around, and you spot a Rogadon lying in the grass. After further inspection, it appears the Rogadon is dead. You look around some more, and you spot the body of a Lalafell near a cliffside. As you approach it, you hear the sound of someone arguing below. Down below, two shady gentlemen argue loudly. One of them is Emmerich, the man you saw earlier in the Coral Tower. He's talking to an Ellison man named Travanche. The men seem to be planning something involving the Sahagin and someone called Merod. It sounds a lot like they're up to no good, but maybe they're just fellow pullers? Being a good boy, you immediately start performing the hand signals of the pullers to get their attention. They respond nervously that their fellow pullers that arrived to the scene with their weapons drawn and the Sahagin simply pass by without causing much fuzz, and that they're both headed back to Fisherman's Bottom to report the incident, Pravanche giving you a cold stare before finally walking away. You return to Sisipu, who's still shuddering, facing away from you and the bodies. As you approach her, the air vibrates once again. Strange how this keeps happening, huh? Suddenly, a group of pullers emerge from the nearby caves. They had been hiding while the reavers passed by. Apparently, the reavers caused no real trouble, as the Barracuda's patrol ship had arrived shortly after to scare them off. The pullers had simply taken precaution and hid until the coast was clear. Sisipu tells of a time when she was younger and the Sahagin raided a nearby village. The Sahagin slaughtered everyone they caught before burning the whole village to the ground. Sisipu feared the same would happen today, but the Knights of the Barracuda saved the day. With your tasks complete, you head back to Fisherman's Bottom. Wawalaga welcomes you both at the Fisherman's Guild. He commends your bravery hands over the payment for your service, and offers a permanent position in the guild before waddling away. Your Oshan's Torch mission is a success. You call Badaron on the ether, asking for advice on where to go next. Badaron suggests visiting Naldic and Vimelis, Limsa Laminsa's premier shipyard and home to both the blacksmiths and armorsmiths guild. When you arrive, the guild receptionist, Bodenolf, is not exactly welcoming you with open arms. Only Steelmaster Hnansa can decide if you're allowed in the guild or not, and just as you're about to slap the receptionist with your balloon fish, loud footsteps boom across the hall. 
Rostenstahl is walking past you. The air vibrates, and you follow him out the door. But where did he go? On the bridge is Stallman and Steelmaster Nansa, overlooking a ship that's under construction by the guild. The ship's engines are misbehaving, and it's being looked into by a company called Garland Ironworks. The ship was originally designated for the Seal Rock expedition you heard about in the Coral Tower. However, due to its current status, it seems like it's going to be delayed. Nansa asks if Stallman has figured out where the island came from, but explains that he has been unable to visit the island in person due to issues arising in Limsa Laminsa. Nansa, curious, asks if it's related to the stowaways on a passenger ship. Stallman is quick to correct her, it was a pirate ship and the crew was locked up when they dropped anchor, and efforts to get a confession from the ship's one-eyed captain has so far been fruitless. Nansa asks if the fact that the ship was carrying more than passengers, it could explain the appearance of the sea serpent. Stallman turns towards her, shocked. As Stallman turns around, he suddenly spots you. He tells you to keep this information to yourself, before walking away. Three Barracuda Knights approach Stallman, informing him that the Provisional Squadron headed for Seal Rock has been ambushed by the Sahagan. The 5th Levy are currently engaging the enemy, with heavy losses reported. It's suspected that someone from within the Knights of the Barracuda has leaked the plans to the Sahagan. Stallman orders immediate retaliation and leaves. With Stallman gone, you go and talk to Bodinolf once again, his rude demeanor seemingly completely gone. He doesn't even seem to recognize you from before. You talk to several other guild members, so you learn that Seal Rock is rumored to actually be Swallowtail Rome. It's rumored to have just appeared out of nowhere during a great storm and is host to a wealth of treasure. The origin of the rumors lay with the legend of Swallowtail Rome, which goes as follows. In the early days of creation, Lim Lane created the Great Serpents, Thalaus and Pericos, to fill the primordial dry with oceans. However, the serpents eventually started to pose a threat to creation by flooding it. Lim Lane therefore chained the serpents to an island and sank it into the sea. Ever since the island was discovered, pirates have been swarming the guild to secretly commission themselves a shipwright to build a boat quick enough to slip by the Barracuda fleet and onto Seal Rock. Foolish as it is, of course, as the Barracudas already have levees stationed on the island and they're not alone. The Sahagan wants a piece of the pie as well. This whole island is a nightmare. You also learn that the Commodore Stallman is one of the highest ranking members of the Knights of the Barracuda. They say his fists are like lead and his heart as cold as iron. And his name literally means Man of Steel. And interestingly, the Admiral himself made him his right hand man. You make it back to Nansa. She's angry at the recent news of Sahagan attacks on the Barracudas and dismiss you, telling you to report to Bodinolf if you wish to join their guild. The air vibrates once again as you return to the guild. Nansa is now in the guild talking to Rostenstahl. She questions if he's come to pay off his debts. He tells her that her damn ship is rusting at the bottom of the sea. Nansa snaps back that he got exactly what he paid for. The ship was never designed to survive the currents near Seal Rock. Wait, what? What does this mean? You've witnessed Stallman talk about a mission to Seal Rock with a brand new ship, only to have Rostenstahl complain about the ship rusting at the bottom of the ocean mere moments later. What is going on? You contact Badron via Link Pearl after checking out the guild and you tell him what's just gone down. Badron tells you that the Barracudas and Sahagan butt heads all the time. It's war after all. He bids you return to the Drowning Wench as he has something he wants to give you. When you arrive at the Drowning Wench, Badron congratulates you on still being alive and hands you 3,000 shiny gil. You've made your first real steps in Limsa Laminsa. But what to make of it? You are left with an abundance of questions. What are these air vibrations? What's the deal with Stallman and Rostenstahl? What's Emmerich and Travanche up to? What actually hides on Seal Rock? And what does it have to do with the Sea Serpent? you saw on the ship on your way here. Stay tuned for the next episode of Chronicles of a Realm as we dive deeper into the sea of mystery in Legends Adrift. 
Thank you for watching, see you next month, and may you ever walk in the light of the crystal.